Today we're going to talk about the Gershon Kron growth model and what it means for the future of China. Now this is the second video in our China's downfall video series, which by the title of that series you can tell it's not going to be a positive look on China. Which by the way, if you haven't seen the first video, well, I'll link to the entire playlist of all these China videos right above. Make sure you check them out. So as we explained in that last video, the Gershon Kron growth model is the same exact model used by both Russia in the 60s and Japan in the 80s. And we saw how it turned out for them, you know, not too good. And now we got China using the exact same growth model but on steroids. Okay, so what is the Gershon Kron growth model? Well, this model explains how undeveloped countries transition into developed industrial societies. It's basically like the process of puberty but for economies. In this version, there's no pimples or unwanted blood flow into parts of your body that just distract you while you're sitting down and trying to learn in class. So in the beginning, developed countries have terrible infrastructure. They don't have any decent central services, no public transportation, and they don't have any of those things things that we take for granted. So to increase investment in that area and to boost the development of it, the government actually puts laws in place that lowers the amount of money going towards households. And you gotta think of it as total GDP. Out of that entire pie, a smaller percentage is going to those households so that way they consume less. And instead, all that money that would have gone to the households goes to the government and they get to direct how it's spent. And governments generally don't have high consumption. So instead, they put all that money into investment. And I know you're thinking this is a terrible idea. Why would you let the government government manage any money at all, they're idiots. But at this stage in the economy, the government actually does a decent job of investment, which I'll explain more real soon. But the main point to understand is that the government takes that money and they invest it in large scale infrastructure projects, along with putting money into expert oriented industries. Investing in these two areas helps the country grow really fast because they get an increasing market share of global exports, along with continuing to invest in high return projects. So this really boosts the country's economic activity and helps it reach a new level financially. This is like the country finally hitting puberty and with puberty you know everyone knows what comes with that credit creation right yeah Maybe, with, with economies at least, that's what happens. So now a credit fueled binge starts happening where you get more lending and then more development and rising prices so that you can use those prices to lend even more. And it's a cycle over and over again. And it's pretty much the classic credit cycle, which if you don't know about, you could watch my series on the credit cycles and the Fed right above. But in the beginning of this, when the government is investing, there's a lot of low hanging fruit because the country started with such low levels of infrastructure and development, anything you threw your money at was usually a good investment. So this whole development cycle can last decades, which is what we saw in Japan, Russia, and now China. But eventually the amount of investments that you can make that are actually productive, well that maxes out because there's only so many high speed rails and bridges that you can build, right? So it's at this point, instead of pushing all the country's money into investment, they gotta start funneling that money back into the households so the households can consume. And having solid household consumption is how you develop a good economy, like in the US. But instead of slowing investment down and shifting over to the households, the guys running the show wanna keep going. You know, they like all this development and want to see where it leads. And this is where you get to the 17 year old Brett Kavanaugh dark side phase of puberty. This is where all this puberty and development start working against you. Because the guys in power running all this development, they've gotten really rich over these last few decades. And at this point, when you're telling them, okay, it's time to take away that money and give it to the households, of course, they're not going to want to do it. They want to keep things the way they are and keep building so that they keep profiting. And in every historical example, this group of people has never volunteered voluntarily switched. Surprise, surprise, no one wants to give up their money. So instead of transitioning, the country doubles down on what it's doing. And I told you they started doing this all on credit, so debt is building higher, higher, and higher. And their solution to get out of that debt is to take on more debt, which will hopefully help them grow out of their current debt. It doesn't make any sense. It's like if you were drowning in a pool and you wanted to stop, so you added more water to the pool with the hope that that more water would push you above the surface, as opposed to drowning you even more. I, I don't know, it doesn't make sense. So these guys end up borrowing even more money to invest in less productive projects, like maybe a second high-speed rail going to the same place so that you and your friend could race on the way to work and just wave at each other. So the economy's growth ends up slowing because these are worse and worse projects that they're investing in, but the debt levels keep rising and the cost to service that debt keeps rising too. So eventually the cost to service all that debt becomes higher than the actual growth rate of the economy. And then you have a big problem because you're spending more than you could make back. And really, once the economy starts this process, there's no good way to get out of it. 
it. The painful rebalance has to happen, it's unavoidable. But you can choose how you want it to happen. You could either have the rebalance be just violent and swift in a huge crash, or you could just have a steady, painful grind lower. The choice is up to the country, but really either option just sucks. But now that you understand this Gershon Crown model of growth, we can apply it to China and see what they've done to follow it. And we'll see how screwed they are too, but that's in the next video. So if you wanna see that, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit that bell for a notification of when it comes out. In the meantime, you can learn more about this China situation by reading this article by Macrops. I'll link to it below in the description and the comments. And make sure you subscribe so I can see you in the next video. Stay foul out there. Bye.